Camp Kennan. Hey, what's going on everybody? Kennan here and I wanted to share with you a little bit of a uh, bonus video as I do every Sunday. We had something interesting happen here today and I want to show you. So we have some eggs and it is the radiated tortoises and we have a radiated tortoise hatching right now and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about them. So here he is or she, I'm not quite sure uh, yet, but there is a baby radiated. Let's get you to focus there. There it is, look at that. How cool is that? Baby radiated tortoise, guys. Now what's so cool about the radiated tortoise is it's not an easy hatch. Number one, the eggs aren't that fertile. Uh, so that can be a pain in the neck. So you might get a female that'll lay about five eggs, but unfortunately, uh, only one or two will hatch because the rest aren't quite fertile. And that's, um, you know, that's the complete opposite of, say, a sulcata tortoise, which lays a lot of eggs and it's very high fertility, and you get almost a 90% hatch rate. But the radiateds are different. The other thing that I've got to do with radiated eggs uh, that most of you may not know about is diapause them. Now, diapause is kind of a suspension of development in the egg, and a few things can trigger it. Uh, sometimes it's going from wet to dry season or dry to wet season. Water can trigger it or a drop in humidity can trigger it. But also, uh, it can go from the cool to warm. So, so with radiated tortoises, you have to cool the eggs down for about a month before you can incubate them. So that's what happens. So I actually put these guys in a cool closet where they're kept between 59 and 70 degrees and you keep them like that for a month and then after that month you then go ahead and put them in the incubator at about 84 85 degrees and three months later you get a baby radiated tortoise so there it is right there and he's moving about now it'll take him uh when all said and done probably two weeks for him to break completely out of the egg and then to absorb his yolk and then he won't have to eat for another two weeks after that um, but the sooner you can get these guys started on foods, the better. And the more aggressive feeders, of course, are going to be the ones that make it uh, or have the best chance of survival. Uh, and as you guys know, in Madagascar, where these animals are from, uh, they are being overcollected for the pet trade in Asia. And they are also, uh, they're losing out to habitat uh, and deforestation. So they're losing their habitat to development. Uh, it's, it's a shame beautiful animal, uh, an endangered animal. Uh, here in the United States, you have to have a special permit to buy or sell them over state lines. So if you lived in New York and you wanted to buy a tortoise from me, you'd have to have a captive bred wildlife permit and I'd have to have a captive bred wildlife permit. But if you were to live in, the, in Florida and had a valid Florida driver's license, I can sell to you in the state. And that's just to keep the interstate uh, trade on endangered species kind of, um, they, they like to kind of uh, survey it and just make sure things are on the up and up. So there it is, a little baby radiated tortoise, and I don't want to keep him out of the incubator too long because the rest of these eggs are cooking as well. So let's see if his brothers and sisters are gonna hatch soon. That would be fantastic. So there you have it, folks. A little baby radiated tortoise bonus. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm getting a bunch of texts, probably from my partner, Tom. I'm doing the bonus video, dude. It's on its way. All right, everyone. I hope you have a great Sunday. Thanks so much for stopping by and spending a little bit of it with me and this new little radiated tortoise. I'm gonna put it back in the incubator and I'm gonna, well, I'm recording this and it's not Sunday. It's actually Monday. Don't tell anyone, all right? We'll see you later. So long.